Hey, Playa, welcome to another live stream here. My name is Josh, and every single Monday through Friday, I make videos sharing tips, ideas, and stories teaching you how to be your best self. And on this live stream, we're gonna be talking about fake friends, the kind of friends that you think are on your side, but actually may be using you for things. Maybe they just want your attention. Maybe they just wanna look like they have a lot of friends. Maybe they don't really care about you, but they want you to care about them. All those different kinds of situations. We're gonna navigate the friend realm, making friends, dealing with losing friends, everything that comes with it. This is also going to be a Q&A. So if you're watching the repeat of the stream, I'm going to be answering a bunch of people's questions. And I'm going to link them down below. I'm going to put all the different timestamps so you can hop around, find the specific questions that I had answered and go check all my answers are for there. But first, I want to thank the people who are here waiting for me to jump on. These are the diehard, hardcore fans right here. Um, I'm just going to jump in and see who's, who's here. Anthony's here. Anthony, what's up? Always a pleasure to see you. Atlanta boy. Uh, King Fire's here. The animation is here. Uh, Corey Man Mangan, um, Maker Mike, Sam Coates, Gamer Ski, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, right at the get go here, we're going to talk about lots of different things. Hey, Junior's in here. What's up, Junior? Dylan is in here, Demented Dog. Um, if this is your first time, in a YouTube live stream of mine, you've never joined one of my live streams in the past, I want you to write in capital letters right there first in the chat right now. I want to know who here is is uh, their first time coming in. And I want, you know, if, if you're a long time coming, say, you know, whether this is your second or third or fourth stream, or if you've been to somebody you don't even remember, just write that, <laughs> write that in the chat right now. I want to get a gauge of who's in here and uh, just kind of start it off the right way, knowing who's new and who we have to kind of welcome into the community, guys. So... King Fire saying first. I know it's not your first. <laughs> Second, first time, first. A million, billion, <laughs> King Fire. Millionth, two billion. Okay, so we got a lot of repeat people here. Once again, thank you guys for being a part of this. So the core, what I want the core of this stream to focus on is really friendships, kind of building solid friendships with people. And, you know, the title says how to spot a fake friend. I'm going to share a few tips on, uh, you know, different behaviors that fake friends tend to use and tend to give off that can kind of set off a red flag in your mind that might make you say like, hey, does this person really care about me as a friend? So I def definitely want to go over those things. I want to know your guys' situations too with friends. You know, this is something I've asked in the past. I'm, in past streams, I want to ask again. If you had to count up the amount of, I would say, best friends, like real hardcore friends that you have, think about it right now. Take a second to think about it. Type it in the chat. How many hardcore, like real best friends, ride or die friends do you guys have? I'm going to think for myself. Let's see. I have one, two, three, four, five, um, six seven about seven i think are like right off the top of my head pop into my mind about seven hardcore friends that i've had for the longest time they're there for me you know i can talk to them about anything so i want to know for you guys so thomas turnus is negative one man you'll that's 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 a tough life to live <laughs> one is junior honestly two to three four uh, the animation is 66 that's a lot of best friends man um Falzar says I have around five, Atlanta Boy four, Dooselbug two, the animation two. So one thing I definitely want to do more in these live streams now is be more interactive with you guys. So I am going to be asking you questions throughout, and I want you guys to share your answers just so we can kind of get an idea of who's here and what everyone else's experience is. Because I feel like apart from me just talking, we can all kind of learn from each other, you know? So there are some people in the chat that are going to share their stories, share their experiences, and it's going to be super helpful to you because, you know, I only have one perspective, but there are a million other different perspectives out there. And I think each of you guys bring something to the table here. So did I get a haircut? Yeah, I got a haircut, I think last Wednesday. If you watched my videos prior to my haircut, my hair was like all bushy and it was a mess, but <laughs> I did get a haircut. Um, so I do want to talk a little bit, spend a little bit of time first on fake friends. So what is a fake friend? How do we determine what a fake friend is? Um, you know, how, how do you kind of like, how do you start to recognize behaviors of a fake friend? So here, in a nutshell, here's what I would define a fake friend as. A fake friend might be someone who is in a friendship with you and is playing up the idea that they care about you when they really don't, right? So they may do things like... Um, they may say stuff to you like, oh, no, we should hang out. We're, we're such good friends. But then they always cancel plans. They never invite you to things. Uh, you find out that they're spreading rumors about you or just talking crap behind your back. Like to me, those are people that are fake friends because real friends really go out of their way to kind of bring you up. They want to see you rise. They want to see you elevate. They want to see you move forward in the world in a positive way. They were also they're also willing to help you get there. A lot of times fake friends 
don't want to see you succeed. You know, what they prefer is that you never move forward so that they don't have to think about themselves moving forward, right? And this this ties into the idea of why negative people are so negative sometimes. Negative people hate seeing successful people. And the reason for that is the same reason I just mentioned. It's that by seeing someone else succeed, by seeing someone else rise through their obstacles, it makes them have to, like, they sit and they have to reflect on their own life and their own behaviors and their own actions. And they're going to have to say, wow, this person is moving forward despite all the outcomes, and I'm not. I'm not doing anything. So because I'm not doing anything, that makes me angry. I'm going to take out my anger on them. You know, Atlanta Boy says that that's envy, which is the deadly sin. Exactly. You know, fake friends can be very envious. They could be envious of you being in a relationship. They could be envious of you having a good family structure and friend structure. Maybe they're envious of you doing well in school, and they just don't like that. So they'll pretend to be your friend, but secretly they just don't like you. You know, they won't say it to your face, maybe because they don't want to deal with that confrontation, but they just kind of do behind the scenes that unless you pay attention to them, you're not really going to notice. So just a quick poll here, yes or no. Have you ever had someone like that in your life? Someone that didn't want to see you move forward, that all they did was criticize you for the choices you made. All they did was put you down for wanting to be in a relationship or put you down for being being with the partner that you had, or just like really just brought a, an air of negativity into your life. Quick yes or no here. Did you guys answer here in the chat? So Dylan says yes. Jay says yes. Max Higgins says yes. Monkey at Fortnite says yes. So there's a lot of people that have been gamer skis is way too many. So, you know, we've all kind of dealt with these people in our lives, right? So first I want to outline what that is. So, you know, we're seeing what it is, what, what it means to be a fake friend. What are the qualities of a fake friend? You know, why do people act like that though? That's the real question we really want to dig into. Why do people take this road of being a fake friend, of, of pretending to want to be happy for you, right? Why would, what would drive someone to do that? Well, like I said before, part of it is insecurity. Part of it is jealousy and envy. And it's the idea that a lot of these people who are in that negative headspace don't feel confident in who they are. They don't feel like they have the ability to move forward and to succeed. So if they see you progressing with your life, and it makes them feel sad or angry or jealous in any way, instead of really truly reflecting on that behavior, instead of saying, you know what, what do I need to do in my life to kind of pick it up? It's it's difficult for them. And, and that's something I think we should realize as someone who may have a fake friend. Um, you know, a lot of times when you find out that a friend is fake and that they don't care about your best interests, and maybe they are just using you in some way, um, we get angry. We feel like, what the hell's what the hell's this person's problem, right? But I, I want us to try to take a different approach to looking at people in those situations. I don't want us to be angry at them. I want us to sympathize in a way, to recognize that this person that we're speaking to, this person who's our fake friend, doesn't understand. They they're not capable of understanding what it means to move forward. And maybe they just need help in some way. Now that doesn't mean you have to help them. That doesn't mean you have to spend any time with them, but recognize that they do need help in some way. You know, a lot of you guys said yes to whether you've had a fake friend like this before, you whether you've had someone use you in your life or just be negative and bring you down. And you know, that is the kind of path I think you guys should work on taking. It's this idea of recognizing that this person is not fully aware of what it takes to succeed. And either I can choose to help them, recognize that they're not a friend of mine, but out of the kindness of my heart, I'm gonna help them. Or if it's too much for you, let them go. You don't need to keep talking to them. You don't need to keep hanging out with them. So that's an important decision for you to come to on your own, right? To not feel like you um, have to keep this person in your life just because you've known them forever, or just because they're friends with your other friends. If you don't feel like this person is bringing positivity into your life, you do not have to keep them there. Like we all have the permission to make that decision, to cut someone out of our lives because we feel like they're not bringing positivity into it. So that's an important thing to remember. So I want to jump back into the chat here and see what some of you guys are saying. I want to hear some of you guys' perspectives on this. Um, do you think that's the right approach? I want to know, does anyone disagree with that? Um, my approach ultimately is if a person is a fake friend or if a person is negative and the person is using you, that we should be sympathetic. We should understand that they're struggling and we should hope for the best for them. Does anyone disagree with that? I'm curious to know. If you agree with it, leave it in the chat too. I want to hear. Uh, me person says, my friend has friends that tells her other friends to back off. She also takes my friend's money and buys stuff. Ooh, see, that's not cool. Like, that would be the definition of a fake friend that's using you, right? Like, sometimes friends... 
and we use the word friends here, sometimes people will um, recognize vulnerability in someone else. They'll see that someone else is kind or someone else is nice, someone else is sweet, and they'll jump on and they'll latch onto that and they'll start to use that person. So me person, you gave a great example there. You know, like uh, she also takes your friend's money and buys stuff. So in those situations, like she may say stuff like, oh, can I get a dollar? Oh, let me get $2. Oh, I need some money for this. And your friend, because your friend is kind, will give her the money. But the problem there is that your friend may not be recognizing that they're being used. They may feel bad or feel guilty. But the best thing that your friend can do in that situation is to put her foot down and to say, no, I'm sorry, I can't give this to you. I think you need to find a way to make money on your own. I think you need to find a way to get by on your own. I can't keep supporting you because you're not going to grow from that. You're only going to get used to the system of me giving you money. So it's important for your friend to put their foot down to let that other friend know that, hey, you can't use me anymore. You know, that's something that needs to be established. Um, let's see. Falzar Gaming says, yes, I got rid of them after two years. And that's another thing too. Sometimes we have these fake friends in our lives and they stay there for a long, long time. And it's not until something snaps in our head that we're like, hey, wait a second. Like, this is the situation. This person is using me. This person's not there for my growth and I'm not there for their growth. Like, why are we maintaining this thing? So for you, it took two years. Sometimes people are friends for five years or 10 years, you know, at that point, which is crazy, but it happens. Uh, Atlanta Boy says in all caps, be happy and positive for people. I agree. And trust me, that is the toughest thing that you can do, especially if this person um, like really irks you on such a deep level. This person just pisses you off, just annoys you, just really gets at you. The hardest thing you can do is to be happy for them. That's the hardest thing you can do. But the most rewarding thing you can do is to be happy for them. So it's difficult, but it's rewarding. And it's a, it's something you have to learn to balance and work on as you get older. Let's see what else you guys are saying. Oh, chat jumped. Every time I scroll, it like will jump sometimes. Okay, Enster says, I have a question, Mr. Speaks. Thank you for calling me Mr. Speaks. <laughs> uh, let's see. I've sort of decided to move on from my crush, but I'm a little conflicted. It doesn't sit right with me not knowing how she feels being moving been, before moving on. Should I ask her out? Okay, so you're saying you've decided to move on from your crush, and it sounds like she, you don't really know how she feels in the equation. So I'm assuming this, that you like this girl, you want to pursue her, but... Uh, things just aren't working out. Maybe she's just not answering your text messages or just doesn't really pay attention to you in school or just kind of ignores you in conversations. So you're kind of noticing your attempts are falling short, right? And you're thinking about giving up here, but you want to make sure first. You want to know first whether or not she actually likes you or whether there's a potential for something there. Well, what do you do in that situation? Well, I think instead of confessing how you feel and just saying, hey, I like you, what do you think about that? Or just kind of like putting your feelings out there. It's so important to show someone how you feel. Now, you said that, you said that, um, you know, you've decided to move on and you feel a little conflicted, but I think really what it comes down to is more so just trying to communicate with her a lot more, trying to really be more proactive there. So maybe you share a class with this girl. Maybe it's a matter of going before class and walking up to her and saying hi after class, walking up to her saying hi, talking to her when she's with her friends, um, asking her for her phone number and texting her or liking her pictures on Instagram and starting a conversation there. Try to use every avenue that you have to get to your crush because until you exhaust all those potentials, um, you're going to get to a point where you're just going to say, eh, it's too much work. I, I don't care. I'm just going to confess my feelings. And look, the likelihood of you confessing your feelings randomly and her liking you back is very, very small. You know, you have to build up feelings. She's not going to automatically have feelings back. She has to build those feelings up. And she's only going to build those feelings up if you invest the time in getting to know her. Let's see. I'm just looking through some of the rest of you guys' comments here. And Lana Boy says, flick them off like this. And he put the middle finger. Um, let's see. Enster says, uh, Nah, I, I get that they may have their own struggles, but you need to cut their ass off. Okay, so that's a good point. So I don't think those two things uh, conflict with each other because the way I see it is like this. It's that you can recognize that someone is struggling and someone is having difficulty, and you can also accept the fact that you may not be the person that needs to be there to help them grow, right? Sometimes the responsibility of helping someone else is too big for us. And maybe it's too much strain on our own mental health, or we just don't have the physical strength to invest time in hanging out with them or any of those things. 
Um, but it's important to recognize when people do need help rather than dismissing them because this is something that commonly happens. We encounter someone that's difficult, someone that's annoying, someone that's using us, someone that's bad, and we write them off. We just determine that this person is bad. But the truth of the matter is, is that no one is all bad. We all have the capacity to do bad. We all have the capacity to do evil, right? It's like there's not one person on this world that is purely good. We all are capable of doing bad things. So it's important to recognize that beyond the things that we do, we're still a person. And as long as you're still a person, as long as you're still alive and breathing, you can make changes in your life. Now, for this person who's a fake friend, this person who's using you, they are not in a place where they feel ready to step out of that. They're still stuck in that mindset of just being a negative, bad person to others. Um, and you may recognize, hey, I don't have it in me to really help this person, and that's okay. I recognize that they're struggling, but it's not my fight to fight. So that's an important thing to remember. I don't think the two conflict with each other, but that's a good point bringing that up, Enstar. I, I agree with you there. Um, Jesus Hernandez says, I feel like... I'm curious, she's in the chat and let us know um, what's going on. If you haven't already, hit the thumbs up button, guys, um, because that's what you do on YouTube videos, right? You hit the thumbs up button. <laughs> okay, let's look at some more of these uh, questions here. So Slayer is saying, Josh, me and this girl have been friends for a couple of years, and she said she thinks we will be friends forever and after high school. We're going to different places for college, and I don't see... Assuming there's a second part to that. Okay, so... I'm going to try to interpret this question in two ways. One, maybe how am I going to maintain a friendship with this girl if I'm probably not going to see her again? And then two, uh, I don't really want a friendship. I want something more, right? And by her saying we, we're going to be friends forever, it makes me feel like there's no potential for a relationship. So the first scenario, uh, and I want you guys to sound off here too. Um, as you guys move to different schools and you get older, whether you're going to college or into high school or you're moving to a different city or whatever, um, have you ever encountered a situation where you had a friend that um, you wanted to be friends with forever, but it just wasn't going to work out? One of you guys was were moving. One of you were going to a different school. You know, it was, it was going to be difficult for you to maintain that friendship with a close friend. Have you ever encountered a situation like that where, you know, life made your friendship difficult? So I've been in that situation tons of times, and I've had friends that said, we're going to be friends forever, and I've even said that to friends too. But what ends up happening is that as life goes on, people develop new friend groups. People kind of experience new things. They encounter new things in life, and their mind kind of shifts away from the old perspective, you know? Think about it like this. Um, think about it like this. When you're, when you're taking a class in school, let's say you're in the ninth grade, you're taking a class. You're working through it. It's a tough class. You know, you you, you study, you do all these things. Um, then the class ends, you go into the next semester or whatever, summer break, you come back to school. Are you really ever thinking about the material you learned in the last class? It's like, it doesn't cross your mind. But when you're in that class, when you were in ninth grade doing it, it's the only thing on your mind. And friendships kind of work like that sometimes too, where let's say you're friends with someone in high school and you guys have these amazing moments together, but then summer break happens and then you go off to college and you meet new people, take new classes, have new responsibilities, and it's hard for you to jump back into the mindset of being a high school student at that point. So if this girl says you're gonna be friends forever, but you guys are just not gonna be in the same school, then I would not worry so much about maintaining this idea of being friends forever. I would just really try to enjoy the moments that you guys have now together. Enjoy the time that you guys can spend as friends. And on top of that, try your best to just keep in contact with her as best as you can. Look, it's so easy now to follow someone on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat and just keep up with their lives slightly. So that might be the next best step. Now, if it's the alternative situation where the girl said, we're gonna be friends forever, but you like her, that's a different ball game. And if you guys want me to answer that and go more in depth on that, leave it in the chat here so I can know. But otherwise, I'm gonna jump to another question here. Let's see. And then I wanna share, I'm gonna answer uh, two more questions. And then I wanna share another piece to the idea of someone using you and what you can do about it. Mm. So Slayer says, Josh, I'm only comfortable around new people when they approach me first. Any tips on making the first move to start conversations? So Slayer, I totally get where you're coming from. I have a friend that's exactly like this. Um, Whenever we go out, whenever we do things, he never wants to be the person that starts a conversation. Like he'll never walk up to a group of people or he'll never walk up to a girl. But he's great when people approach him and start talking to him. So 
you have to ask yourself this. Where is your strong point? Are you a strong conversation starter or are you good at keeping a conversation going? So if you're good at keeping conversations going and talking about things, okay. So what you need to really work on is the opening, the conversation starters. The truth of the matter is, is that how you start a conversation doesn't really matter that much. Uh, a lot of people put a huge emphasis on it, but it really doesn't matter that much. What matters is where you take the conversation. So here's an example, right? Let's say I walk up to a group of girls, right? Just randomly, let's say a group of girls in school. Let's say I'm in high school. I'm walking to a group of girls just hanging out. Um, what I say to them initially isn't going to matter so much because if I say something really funny and really cool um, and they laugh and they talk to me for like 10 seconds, what matters is how I follow up, how I keep the conversation going. So a lot of times people want to learn, what do I start the conversation with? But really what you should be focusing on is how do I keep the conversation going so that they don't feel weird or awkward or want me to leave? Now, you can always start with something like, hey, let me ask you guys a question and then ask a genuine question about something that you're interested in, right? Like, for example, um, I'm behind on the show The Walking Dead, right? So when The Walking Dead premieres in like a week or two weeks or whatever it is, you know, I'm going to ask people, hey, have you have you seen The Walking Dead? By any chance, do you watch it? Um, oh, you, oh, you don't watch it. Oh, cool. What other shows do you watch? And then we'll get into conversation about something else. But I use The Walking Dead as an opener because it's something that I'm genuinely curious about, right? So you can do that with anything. You can do that with music or movies or anything you see on YouTube. You can ask people about the Shane Dawson series that's out now. Like there are a lot of different ways to start a conversation. And I think what matters more is how you carry it going forward. So don't worry so much or stress out about starting the conversation, really focus on, okay, once they answer me, how do I then follow up? And then how do I dig deeper into the questions so that I can have more to talk about with them? Let's see. Player named Prince. I like the name. Um, what to do when you like someone, uh, but they think they have, but they think they have a girlfriend, but not sure. My situation is like that. I don't know what to do. So what to do when you like someone, but they think they have a girlfriend, but not sure. So Hmm, not really sure. They think they have a girlfriend or you may think they have a girlfriend. So um, what I've talked about in the past is something I call the boyfriend trick, but it can also be the girlfriend trick. You can use it in any which way you want, uh, any possible way. But the idea here is this. It's that um, what you want to do is imply that the person is dating someone and then let them correct you. So here's how it would work, right? Um, I'd walk up to someone and say... Um, What's a movie that's coming out now? Okay, the Venom movie, right? I would say, hey, the Venom movie's coming out. Are you going to go see Venom with your boyfriend? Or are you going to go see Venom with your girlfriend? I would imply that you have a boyfriend and girlfriend. And then the person would respond by saying something like, oh, no, I don't have a boyfriend, um, but I don't plan on seeing it. Or, oh, no, I don't have a girlfriend. I don't plan on seeing it. And it doesn't sound like you're walking up to them and going, do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? It just sounds like you're casually working it into conversation, right? We are Venom. <laughs> so that might be a good way to kind of casually bring it in and to find out whether or not they have one. Now, if they're not sure if they have one and maybe they think they might have one, well, I would approach it from the perspective of just take time getting to know them better, just see where things are going with you, and then really just casually follow up and ask as time goes on to learn a little bit more about where they actually stand. Um, we are Venom. <laughs> All right, so guys, I'm curious. How many of you guys... Uh, and girls are planning on seeing Venom or just interested in it. I don't know if I'm gonna watch it in theaters. I'm. I always tell myself I'm gonna go to see all the Marvel movies, but I just sometimes never do. But I am super, super excited for it. How many of you guys are excited for Venom? If you are, type yes right now in the chat. Um, type you're gonna go see Venom. Type yes. Let's see. Uh, it's Gabby Gamer says, dear jo dear Mr. Josh, um, I'm having some trouble in school. My best friend keeps slapping me every time I talk to another friend. I have an online friend, but she keeps telling me pretty bad stuff about him. Mm, okay. So it sounds like, hmm, having, you're having trouble in school. Your best friend keeps slapping you every time you talk to another friend. So it sounds like your friend is trying to control you in, in a way. Like they don't want you having other friends. They don't want you talking to other people. And that could be purely out of insecurity. You know, sometimes people get territorial of their friends. They try to block anyone else from talking to them because they're afraid. Ooh, sorry. They're afraid they're going to lose you. That's the real thing, right? Like 
you, they don't want you making other friends because you may become better friends with them. And that might mean that they become irrelevant. You know, no one ever wants to feel irrelevant. So they may try to discourage you or tell you not to talk to people or spread rumors or do anything they can so that you don't reach out to the outside world. If you have a friend that's doing that, I would say that that's a friend that's using you because they don't really want you to grow and learn and kind of prosper in your own way. They really want to keep you closed off. And to me, that's a form of using someone. And, and that's kind of tying in, that kind of ties into what I wanted to kind of talk a little bit more here about using um, someone because what may happen sometimes, like we mentioned earlier, how a friend may use you by saying things like, oh, can I get a dollar? Can I get this? Can I get that? And they kind of just keep asking you for things. And because you're a kind person, you give it to them. Eventually you realize, hey, wait a second. Like they really just only come around or they only talk to me when they need something. So another piece of using someone, how to know if you're being used by someone um, might be in kind of is when they want to be friendly with you. So this is something that happens a lot. I, I see it happen uh, a lot when like a guy likes a girl and the guy becomes what, what's called an orbiter, right? So an orbiter would be, let's say this microphone is the girl for a second, right? Um, the guy will literally like orbit around the girl and it's like wherever she goes, he'll follow, you know, because he likes her and she knows he likes her. So she uses that to her advantage. So Whenever she's bored, she'll talk to the guy. Whenever she is talking to a guy she actually likes, she'll ignore you. She kind of only keeps you around. And this works also the opposite because guys do this to girls too, which is not cool on either side. But, um, you know, the person will only keep the person, the other person, like they only keep them around if they know that they're going to gain attention from them. And that's a huge thing that happens when people use other people. They do it for attention. They want to look like they have a lot of friends. They want to feel important. They want to feel heard, but they're not willing to commit to giving that back to another person. So that's how you can, once you start seeing that type of behavior, once you start feeling like you're not being cared for, you're not being taken into account, you're not being listened to by that person, I would really start to question, hmm. I would really start to question whether or not they genuinely do care about you and they genuinely want to see you kind of prosper um, because that's something that, you know, can really go under the radar. And what can really cloud it up sometimes is, is if you like someone, that may happen. And this is now I want to jump back into the chat here. I want you guys to answer. Um, have you ever been in a situation like that where you liked someone and you kind of hung around them hoping that they would like you back? but you never felt like they gave you the attention that you wanted. Like they kind of just had you there just because you liked them and they wanted that attention. You know, have any of you guys ever been in that situation? I mean, I've shared a million times. I don't even know how many times I've shared in the past my whole situation with um, the girl who friend zoned me in high school. And a lot of times this does end up in a friend zone type of situation. For me, it was in high school where the girl friend zoned me and I just kind of wanted to be around her. I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to lose her from my life, even if it meant never being with her. So instead, I settled for a friendship, even though I wanted a relationship. And it hurt. It hurts knowing that the person that you are investing time into doesn't really care back for you in the same way. Um, Sam Co Coates Hammond says, I'm in that situation now. Um, Thomas Turner says, I wish I was a banana. Okay. <laughs> Dark soul. <laughs> banana power. Banana power. I'm a banana. I wish I understood what was going on. Um, but once, yeah, but I figured it out. Gamerski says he figured it out. Uh, me person says yes. Uh, my friend told me to wait a few more days. Yes, let the bananas rule. But <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's kind of, it's a sucky spot to be in. And it hurts. It really does hurt. And to me, that is a fake friendship. Because both people, first off, you're not in it because you really want to be friends. You're in it because you want something more. And that person is not in it because they want to be friends. They're in it because they want attention from you. Now, um, I think tying into that, what I would say is this. If you love bananas, post the banana emoji right now in the chat. Guys, this is important. <laughs> bananas are taking over, but... <laughs> But yeah, I mean, to, to, to go back to that, it's like, it's a sucky feeling to be in. That's Once you start getting into that place where you feel like you are an orbiter for this person, you're following them wherever they go, just so that they can give you attention, just so that they can acknowledge you, it's a bad spot to be in. It's not fair to you. You deserve way better than that. So to anyone that's in that spot, you, deserve, you don't deserve that. You deserve way better. 
Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Pangan representative breaks breaks the chain here. We're posting bananas, man. What are you coming with this eggplant for? What's that about? <laughs> anyway, okay. All right. Back to the real business. Back to the... You're getting me distracted with the bananas. All right. Summer32 says, by the way, if you like bananas, hit the thumbs up button on this video. Uh, what advice do you in school, let's say, oh, what advice do you in school if you feel self-conscious? What advice do you have for school? If you feel very self-conscious and feel like others are judging and thinking negatively about them? Ah, that's a good question. So Summer, um, what's important to remember here is that we sometimes, sometimes we attribute motive to people, right? So we think sometimes if people are looking at us or whispering around us or laughing, we tend to think, are they laughing at us? Are they making fun of us? Did I do something wrong? Do I look stupid? Do they not like me? We tend to create a sense of negative response from people, right? And it's like, that person may have never said anything or done anything, but we think they did. So how do you kind of get out of that space? Let me just go back to the question here to make sure I can address it properly. So if you feel very self-conscious and feel like others are judging and thinking negatively about them, I think what's important is that now let's do watermelon. These guys, watermelon. All right, post some watermelons. Um, hey, Elite Minds, I'm happy you won the math debate, man. So anyway, so... <laughs> um, so if you feel like you're self-conscious in those places where people are kind of making fun of you or attacking you, one, first, I just want to let you know, it's okay to feel the way that you do. You know, it's not wrong or bad. You shouldn't just get over it. It's it's how you feel, and, and that's okay. Feelings are always mentionable and manageable. Does it say it on the wall here? No, I don't have that one. Uh, these are all Mr. Rogers quotes, and feelings are mentionable and manageable is another one of his quotes. But um, I think what's important is to, to recognize that um, People will make their own assumptions. Everyone does. Like you make your you make assumptions of people all the time. When you see them, you hear them say something, you see them do something, and we just assume things. We kind of create assumptions about them. That's normal, right? Now, what ends up happening is this, is that if we allow the opinions of others to dictate how we live our lives, then we're never going to move forward. We're going to spend way too much time focusing on what other people are saying and other people are doing. For example, I'm trying to talk to you about this and answer your question, but I see this stream of bananas on the chat and they're trying to distract me. I can't. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stick with it, guys. Uh, you guys are making me break break this. Um, but yeah, I mean, I hope you understand my point. I know I'm laughing and I'm joking and I'm not trying to make light of the situation. Um, um, I know it's tough. It's tough. I've been in this situation tons of times. I know a lot of people have, so you're not alone in feeling that way. A lot of people feel that way. A lot of people feel uh, self-conscious and feel like others don't like them or others making fun of them. Um, let's take a break, break from the emojis for a second, guys. I want you guys to uh, just be honest here and, and, and say that. Have you ever felt that way before? Have you ever felt like self-conscious that people were kind of judging you or thinking negatively about you? Have you ever been in that position? I want to know what you guys have to say. I want to hear your two cents on that. Um, let's see. Johnny Glass says, I was just patient and was there for her. It didn't make it awkward soon enough. She fell for me and we started dating. So yeah, so Johnny is giving his perspective on what happened with him and the girl here. Um, he was patient. He was there for her. It didn't make it awkward. And eventually started dating. So Johnny's situation sounds like the kind of play that's kind of situation where um, he just invested time in getting to know her. He built a relationship there, really having quality time with each other. And then eventually she realized, wow, this is an amazing guy. I want to be with him. Right. So a lot of people ask me, they're like, well, I talked to my crush. I spent time with them, but they still friends on me. What gives? Well, um, I think the important thing to remember is that there's a difference between a friendship and friend zone, right? So how do you know if you're maintaining a friendship with the girl or you're in the friend zone with the girl or a guy, whatever it may be? Uh, the difference really is, do you pursue that person with the intent and do you make it obvious that you like them and that you're attracted to them? Because that's really the difference. Guys who are in the friend zone don't do that. Guys who are in the friend zone will say stuff like, oh, you know, you're so cute. You should have a boyfriend right? That's a friend zone response. But a friendship response would be like, you're so cute. You know, you're lucky I didn't ask you out yet. You're, you know, like we'd be dating right now if I decided to ask you out. Like that's a flirty, fun response because you're asserting yourself versus the other guy who's like, oh, you know, you should have a boyfriend. Not trying to say you, me, you know, like there's the defensiveness. So when, once you let go of that defensiveness, it becomes easier. Um, so yeah, Anthony saying yes, me person. So yes, every day. Yeah, today. So Tr Tristan says that, you know, a lot of people have been in the situation. So you're not alone. That's kind of the point I wanted to drive home there. 
Um, there was another question I wanted to grab up here. Elijah West says, Josh, how do I tell the different yeah, how do I tell the difference between a girl who actually likes me or a girl who just wants my attention? That's a really good question. How do you know when a girl is flirting with you because she wants to pursue something with you? And how do you know it's not just she wants you to be around so she can feel good. Well, I think the difference comes in not so much in her behavior, but in her response to what you ask of her. That's the key thing here. Instead of trying to say like, wow, she um, she she touched my arm when she, she was laughing. Maybe she likes me or maybe she doesn't like me. Instead of trying to read her responses, focus on what you are asking of her. So if you see that she's flirty with you, you can say, hey, what are you doing? Let's hang out Friday. If she agrees to hang out with you, then it's on a path where you guys can develop something. If she doesn't want to hang out with you one-on-one, -on -one, she doesn't want to spend time alone, she doesn't flirt back when you flirt, if she just doesn't do those things, then it's probably a sign that she just wants your attention. She wants you to kind of like be interested in her, but she's not willing to kind of bring you on board to date her. So it's a tricky thing. I, I get where you're coming from. It's a hard line to walk, but it's an important one to really try to understand you doing the, either qualify or disqualify her. Let's see. Uh, Pangan representative says, my crush used me throughout used me throughout my teen years as a fallback. Then she left me when she found someone better. You must always be careful. And that's a really, really good perspective to share. Thank you for sharing that, Pangan. And if anyone else has a has an interesting perspective or story or experience, definitely leave it in the chat, guys, because I feel like everyone's in here reading the chat and stuff. So we're definitely learning from each other. Um, but one thing I do want to say to that, so, you know, the crush used you as a fallback because she probably saw that you were someone who liked her and she knew that she didn't have to do any work to get you right. Like you were a guarantee. So for her, that wasn't interesting. There was no mystery there. There was no pizzazz. It was like, oh, okay, this guy likes me. And if I ever am bored and want a boyfriend, I can go to him. So what you always want to do is make yourself available, but unavailable, right? You don't ever want to be sitting around waiting for someone to pick you. You want to say to yourself. I'm going to find a person that I want to be with and I'm going to get to know them better and see if they're right for me. That's the kind of mindset you want to approach these type of things with. Um, in that situation, Pan Gang, it sounds like she was probably uh, not a real friend to you, right? Like maybe she, um, you know, was a friend at some point, but that friendship might have deteriorated. That's another piece too that I definitely want to share with you guys here is that, you know, sometimes things start as friendships, but can deteriorate over time, right? A person may be your honest, genuine friend, but maybe then as time goes on, they meet new people and those new people get in their ears and change, change that person's perspective of you. And then they start to become a fake friend. So, I'm not saying these things to kind of make you second guess and question all your friends. That's not really the point here. The point more so is this. It's that you should try to always surround yourself with people that want what's best for you, people that are looking out for you, right? Whether it's a girl that you want to pursue and become and you wanted to become your girlfriend, whether it's a boy that you want to just be friends with and, and have someone to talk to things about or vice versa or whatever it may be, you know, the, the point is you have to surround yourself with people that care about you. And I know sometimes that you um, sometimes that you may like someone and you may want them in your life, but it's important to remember that it's okay to let people go if you don't feel like they're adding that positivity there. I know it's tough. It ain't easy. I know. I know. I'm saying it like it's easy, but it ain't easy, guys. Now, if you haven't already hit the thumbs up button, definitely on this video, we're at 34 likes. Let's see if we can get this to 50 likes by the end of the live stream. Um, one thing I do want to jump in here and say, guys, is that. Um, at the end of this live stream, I'll be wrapping up probably, probably around six. I go on Instagram and I do an Instagram after party. A bunch of you already know. If you've been in the Instagram after party before, if you've, you've joined it, type party right now in the chat if you've been to the Instagram after party before. But anyway, for those who don't know what it is, I jump on Instagram. It's very exclusive. Only people who are following me can join. Um, so if you follow me over on Instagram, my Instagram's the Josh Speaks. I'm the Josh Speaks on everything. But uh, follow me over at the Josh Speaks. And what I do in the Instagram after party is I jump in, I invite you guys on, and we have a video chat with everyone there kind of in the chat listening. So it's really, really cool. It's a lot of fun. Um, but you have to be following me over on Instagram to join. Um, and I, that's going to follow immediately after this live stream. This is the main thing. And then the after party comes. Um, let's take a sip of water. Elite Mind says party, Dark Souls party, Gamer Ski party, Anthony party, Pangan party, Gamer Ski party, Gamer Ski, I said twice, Thomas Turner, don't party, King Arby, King, King Arby, King Fire party. Uh, me personally says, sorry, don't have it for reasons. That's cool, man. It's all good. You don't have to be part of the Instagram after party. It's just an extra thing that we do here. Um, 
I'm not allowed to have Instagram. So yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, Gabby. It's all good. Um, like I said, it's not mandatory, but it is fun. So, you know, it's just a fun thing to check out. But anyway, so um, another thing I wanted to talk about here when it comes to fake friends is that, you know, we talked a lot about how to really determine what it, what are the qualities you want to look for in a friendship. Um, but I think it's also important to think about the qualities that you may want to stay away from in a friendship. So do I have Twitter? I do have Twitter. My Twitter is the Josh Speaks. I'm the Josh Speaks across the board. So some of the qualities you may want to stay away from that you may notice in friends are things like bad behaviors, things like someone who maybe lies a lot, someone who bullies other people, someone who is rude, spreads rumors, you know, sometimes when they're your, it's your friend doing it, you kind of dismiss it. You kind of say like, ah, whatever, he's just being silly or she's, she's just joking around. But the truth of the matter is, is that if that person is willing to do it about someone else, if they're willing to spread rumors or bully someone else, then they can easily turn around one day and do it to you. So what you really want to do is not have the type of friend in your life that is going to be a bully or is going to be rude or is, is going to lie or is going to try to introduce you to bad things because at some point they can always turn around and put it on you. You want someone who if they turn around, they're only going to bring positive qualities to the table. So try your best to really distance yourself from friends that are like that. You know, and look, guys, I'm going to be real. If you're someone like that, too, because I know some of you guys have been it because I've been that way, too. I've bullied kids before, and there's nothing wrong with admitting that and, and accepting that, hey, I've, I've done something that wasn't really cool. So if you're someone that spreads rumors or bullies or, you know, lies and does these different things, um, I mean, you better recognize that at some point your friends may catch on and your friends may leave you too. So the best thing for you to do is to kind of cut those behaviors, to really try to focus on building better relationships with people rather than building relationships on negative connections, you know? So, um, hey, me personally, your real, real name is Josh. That's awesome, man. Uh, Alex Ulua says, I watched many of your videos. I had the courage to ask on my crush last year and got rejected. Darn, man. Sorry to hear that. I mean, it's a sucky outcome, right? Got rejected, but I'm super, super proud of you for actually going for it. Like when you think about how many people there are that have crushes that never act on them, like the amount of people who do is such a small percentage and you are part of that small percentage that was proactive, that went after what you wanted. You didn't sit back. You didn't tell yourself, no, I'm too scared. No, I'm not going to do it. You said, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to see where it takes me. If it works, that's great. If it doesn't, okay. You went for it, man. And that's something to be super, super proud of. So I'm sorry it didn't work out, but be proud of yourself for actually going for it. So Deanimation says, I had a friend in elementary school and he would injure me all the time for no reason. I finally cut it off when we went to high school after six years. Why did it take so long to realize it? And, that, and that's what I'm, exactly what I'm talking about, Deanimation. Sometimes it's like we have these people in our lives and we just it doesn't click in our minds like, hey, this person's not a good person to be around, right? They will bully you. They'll fight you. They'll tease you. They'll throw things at you. They'll do these things which you kind of like normalize you you say ah they're just being silly ah they're just they're just doing dumb things um but it's important to recognize like what do you how do you want to feel when you're around other people do you want to feel nervous and scared do you want to feel hurt or offended no you don't want to feel those things you want to be around people that are going to uplift you i mean and i i've said the same thing i know millions of times on the stream already but I keep wanting to drive that point home. I keep wanting to drive it home that you want to be surrounded by people that are going to help you grow. They're going to challenge you, but challenge you in a good way. They're going to challenge your ideas, challenge your ability to succeed. They're going to push you because they want to see you climb up that hill and, and grow. Um, Johnny Glass says, be patient and don't bug her about it. Uh, oh, this is in reference to another question. Uh, now, how to take it, there is not easy, there's no magic switch. Just talk about it with her and see if she's comfy with it or not, then be understanding. So I missed Axe's original question, but thank you, Johnny, for jumping in and, and answering that. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Just reading through some of the things you guys are saying here. Uh, I don't know if I, uh, Corey Mangan says, I don't know if I should ask my crush out. I really want to do it. Um, so Corey, it really all depends. It really all depends on how close you are with them, right? Have you spent time learning a little bit more about them? Have you learned what their interests are, what their hobbies are, um, what they like to do for fun, who their friends are, 
what their favorite class is, like learn all these little personality traits about that person. And then when the, you feel like the two of you are comfortable just being around each other, comfortable just having a conversation, ask them to hang out one-on-one. -on -one. Because once you get to that point where you're ready to ask them to hang out one-on-one, -on -one, at that point, the person is, is totally on board because they've invested time in getting to know you better. Let's see. Thomas Turner says, Josh, what is the most liked comment you've ever had on YouTube? Oh, I don't even know. I would assume it might be a comment on my five signs a girl likes you video. I because I think that's my most popular video. So it's probably a comment that I've made on there that probably has gotten the most likes. Otherwise, I'm not sure. I wish it was an easy way to find out. Uh, Moonstrike is saying the one person I could have a group with is going with other people. Uh, bummer. I think you're talking about homecoming. Right? I think I saw something about homecoming there. Yeah. I mean, that's another sucky thing too it's that you know sometimes when you get left out of things it can really like it really sucks right like it's just a hard feeling to deal with no one ever wants to feel left out so when you are left out it's tough to kind of want to do the things <sighs> it's tough to kind of want to do the things that you were going to do with people but now you want now you have to do it alone it's it's hard to push yourself to go by yourself to do it so i understand where you're coming from there I mean, is it possible with that to it? Do they not like you? What would be the, the issue with that, with asking them? Um, Pangan says, stay away from people that criticize your every quality. Some honest criticism is good for growth. Yep. But when the, they criticize how you, th how you look or think, then it's bad. Yeah, I agree. Like, like, for example, I had a friend from high school who, now look, I have no sense of style. I'm not really like a fancy dresser guy. I just wear normal clothes. But when I was in high school, I dressed very like um, bummy-ish. Like I wore jeans that were huge and my t-shirts were stretched out. So I had a female friend that told me, she's like, hey, look, Josh, like you can really improve your quality of dressing. Like you can look better. So I told her, okay, I put my trust in you. Help me find clothes and stuff. And she came out with me one day and I found clothes. She helped me pick out clothes. I think I got stuff from like American Eagle or whatever it was. But um, ultimately, what I learned from that experience was that she didn't come at me and make fun of me. She didn't come at me and attack me. She came at me with genuine criticism, right? Like, oh, you can improve your look. And then she offered to help. And it was the combo of that too. It was the criticism along with the help, which showed me that she genuinely wanted to see me succeed. She didn't just want to kind of make fun of me and then walk away. So I never felt intimidated or hurt or attacked when she said that because I knew she had my best interest at heart. Let's see. Nick Uline says, so I have this one friend who is the kind of leader of our friend group, and we've been friends with, since fifth grade. Ever since we've been hanging out with girls recently, he, ugh, I hate that it's a 200 character limit. Um, okay, so Nick, I'm going to look for your comment when you respond with the part two of it. Um, friend is the leader of your group. You've been friends since fifth grade. Ever since you're hanging out with girls recently, he probably has changed. In some hey, Vsauce, Michael here. <laughs> I love Vsauce. They're great. Um, let's see. Uh, the animation says, Josh, what do you think is the perfect amount of time to wait until someone, until asking someone out that you've become friends with? That's a good question. I feel like I've addressed that in a video, but I don't remember. I don't know. Either way, I'll share my perspective on that. I don't think there's a set time, which is probably not the answer you want to hear. You probably want to hear like a month or two months. I don't think there's a set time. I think instead of Time is maybe not the right way to look at it. It's more so engagement, right? How engaged are you with that person? Because look, you can wait two months, three months, four months, but if you barely talk to that person, the amount of time doesn't matter. What matters is the level of engagement you have. You can have a high amount of engagement over a few days, and that might be enough to ask them out, right? It really comes down to how much time have you invested in talking to them and getting to know them better? If you've invested a lot of time and they've they're comfortable sharing things with you, by all means, ask them out. That is the next step. Um, and that's important to remember. Okay, so Nick says, so I have this friend who is the leader of our friend group since making fun of me. Uh, let's see. We started hanging out with girls. He started making fun of me now. Uh, me and now everyone who I'm really friends with makes fun of me too. Ah, I hear what you're saying, Nick. So, and that's what I was talking about before, how sometimes people can start as real friends and then they transition as they start to get older, as they start to make new friends, as their life starts to change, they start to kind of be jerks to us. They start to make fun of us. They start to tease us. Um, it sounds like your friend might be doing it in front of girls because 
a lot of times guys will do things in front of girls to kind of show off. They want to look more macho. They want to look cooler. And the easiest way to look cooler is to put someone else down because it's like saying this. Let's say we're all on equal playing field. Mm. Mm. I went to sleep at like two in the morning or three in the morning last night. All right. Let's say we're all on an equal playing field, right? We're all equal. It's a lot harder for people to stand up than it is to knock you down. And people will take the chance to knock others down. Now, look, if I knock you down, I look like I, I'm higher than you, even though we both started there. So a lot of guys will do that. They'll tear other guys down because they feel it makes them look bigger. But in reality, they haven't done anything. They haven't demonstrated anything to show that they've grown as a person. Now, how do you deal with this situation? What do you do about that? Well, if you feel like your friend is doing it in front of girls just for attention, just to get them to laugh, I personally would pull them to the side and talk to them about it, right? Like I've had heart to heart conversations with my friends before and not coming in it to attack them or accuse them of things, but just to talk to them about the type of friendship I wanted. So for example, one thing you might want to do is you might want to pull them aside one day and say, Hey, look, dude, I noticed you've been acting differently whenever there are girls around. Like you try, I, I feel like you're trying to like play something up. You're trying to tear me down, tear other people down just to kind of look better. And I feel like it's hurting our friendship, man. I feel like it's not allowing us to be as close as we once were. Be honest and be real when you talk to him about it. If you see he's not willing to change, if he's just sticking to his thing and he's like, oh, you're just being a baby. Oh, you're stupid. Oh, you know what you're talking about. If he keeps that attitude, it might make sense to start moving away because like we said in the very, very beginning, guys, he's not ready to grow. He's not ready to learn what it takes. Sorry about that. He's not ready to learn what it takes. Uh, every time... I always eat before I do my live stream. So then it's like, oh, I'm burping. <laughs> I'm yawning. <laughs> um, I got to eat after or, or earlier in the day. But anyway, um, so, so, you know, that person is not willing to really um, take criticism, change their behavior and move forward. They're just stuck in this kind of negative loop. Uh, real, real life says, Josh, my iPad is about to die. How do I ask on my crush tomorrow? Help. Real life, I think the best way to ask her out uh, is to simply, to simply just, ask her to do something to join you in doing something that you want to do, right? So it might be something as simple as like, hey, what are you doing after school? Let's get food, let's get something to eat. Something as simple as that. Or it might be, um, hey, um, what's it called? Um, what's your Instagram? I just said on my Instagram, let me add you on there. Or hey, I'm starting a group chat and I want to bring a few people from school in here. What's your thing so I can add you on my group chat? Just jump in and ask a question, right? That may be the best way to just ask her to hang out and then have a plan with it. Ask her to get food after school, ask her to hang out during lunch, whatever it may be. Uh, what's your advice to enjoy homecoming as a loner? Moonstrike, I'm pretty sure I did a video on that. I think I did a video on going to a school dance alone or going to homecoming alone. You might wanna search on my channel to see if it's there. All right, guys, we're at 39 likes. Let's get this to 50 likes. We have seven minutes to get this 50 likes. If you haven't already liked it, hit the like button on this video. Um, but that's what I basically say. It's like, if you're going to homecoming as a loner, um, one, you have to remember this, is that if people are going with dates, they're not going to spend the whole night with those dates. They're only going to spend a little bit of time here and there dancing with them. So your friends are still going to be accessible. Plus, if you're going there alone, you could still talk to anyone there. Like the beauty of being there by yourself is that you have no boundaries and no restrictions. You're not tied to the hip to by, you know, you're not tied to the hip of someone else. You are free flow and you're able to go as you wish. So you can walk up to this group and talk to them. You can walk up to this girl and dance with her. You can walk up to these guys and talk to them. You can do whatever you want. So and remember this is that homecoming really is all about having fun. So go in with the mindset of just having fun. Don't go in with the mindset of like, oh, this sucks. I'm by myself. I have no one to talk to. Go in with the mindset of I'm going to approach people and have lots of fun with anyone that I can. I'm going to have conversations. I'm just going to enjoy the night for me. I think that's the best way to go in the best mindset to carry. Let's see. Emmanuel uh, Pimentel says, hey, Josh, can you come to my school and talk about relationships and bullying? My friends get bullied and struggle with relationships. I would be happy if you come to my school. So Emmanuel, um, that's a really, really good thing you bring up here. One thing I do want to say to you guys is this. It's that um, this year I'm focusing a lot more on speaking at schools. So if you are someone who wants me to speak at your school, I, I haven't set it up yet, but I am going to set up a page um, that you guys can go in Put, put your information down and then I will reach out to your school and see if I can talk to them and see if I can set something up to go speak there. That would be really cool. Another thing I'm planning on setting up on the channel is the, um, 
the sponsors sponsorship thing that they have where you can join and it's i think it's 4.99 a month and you get special perks like you get special little emojis that you can have next to your name you can use special emojis in the chat you guys you guys are going to access to a private voice discord where i can check in with you guys once a week just to see how you're doing and have a little private conversation here and there um, so there's going to be a lot of perks that come along on my Instagram. I posted a story that a lot of you guys gave ideas for what you'd want to see if I did a membership program. So that's all coming to, like I said, join me over on Instagram in a few minutes. I'm going to go over and do the Instagram after party. We're going to answer a few more questions here. So I'm super excited guys. Now I'm curious to know, uh, we'll do a quick poll here. How many of you guys have been in this chat since the very beginning? Yeah, maybe you left and you came back but like have you been around for the whole chat here if you've been around for the whole chat write it down in the comments if you've only been here for five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes write it in the comments too. write five or 10 or 15. if you've been here the whole time write one hour i want to see i want my one hour crew in here let's see who the one hour crew is um anthony's saying wait what about the people that are already on your discord anthony yeah yeah so the text discord that i have now is going to be more casual conversation. I'm going to jump in that whenever I can. I'm planning on using the voice discord, the private, a private voice discord server as a way to like, just have a conversation with people. So like we can jump on like a scheduled time conversation low. So like at like 4 PM every Friday, I jump on, I'm there. And anyone that can join in that time can join and have a voice conversation with me. I'm, I'm still trying to work out the details, but let's see. Oh, we got one hour crew. Strong kids. Welcome. You haven't ready. Um, one hour, Thomas Turner, hour, the animation hour, King fire an hour, Jade an hour. I think 30 minutes. Shawnee says, uh, I've been here since like two 30. That's a long time. <laughs> uh, John, Mar uh, Mar 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 20 minutes. Uh, me person says I need to chat with you. Me person. Uh, if you can go over to Instagram and you can jump on a video chat with me there. I'm usually a uh, one hour crew. Yeah. We got a lot of one hour people in here. Thank you guys for sticking around by the way. That's, that's really cool. I'm really proud. Uh, proud of you guys for sticking around. Okay, let's answer a few more questions. Let's get to it. Rapid fire, guys. I'm going to try to rapid fire these questions. Nick Crompton says, there's a girl that always plays with her hair and always laughs uh, at everything I say. We live in the same building. Okay, quick answer to that, Nick. Um, it sounds to me like you have an interest in her. You want to get to know this girl better. I think instead of focusing so much on her playing with her hair, her smiling at you, her doing these things, don't worry about those things. Don't worry about signs. Worry about creating moments with her, right? Focus on walking up to her, especially if she lives in your building. Walk up to her and say hi. Ask her how she's doing. Ask her if she's going somewhere. You know, since you guys live near each other, you can always invite her to go somewhere to eat near your house and you both can walk home together. So it's an easy opportunity for you to build something with her. Don't worry about signs. Focus on creating moments. Okay, next question. Josh Marmara says, hey, Josh, I don't know if you answered this yet, but what do I do if I like someone, but I'm too nervous to make the first move? John Marmaris, I know where you're coming from on that, man. It's tough sometimes when you like someone and you want to make things happen, but ah, the first move is always a scary thing. So here's what I recommend. What I would recommend is this. Check out my video on making uh, how to make the first move. I break down the different steps you can take. I think you should follow the three second rule. And what that basically means is this. When you spot your crush, you spot someone you want to talk to, give yourself no more than three seconds to go talk to them. So something like that would be like, you're in the hall, you see the girl that you like, you can go, okay, I'm going to go talk to her. One, two, three, boom, start walking, go say hi to her. The more you push yourself to do those things, the less you're going to second guess yourself, the less you're going to be like, oh no, should I? Oh no, she's busy. Oh no, she's with friends. The less that's going to happen. If you're already counting down in your head and you're going to go for it, that's going to help you move forward and make the first move. Okay. Dijon Hunt says, how do you, how do you know if your crush likes you? That's a good question, Dijon. I think the best sign that a, that a person can show that they like you is their willingness to invest time in hanging out with you. Time is the most essential asset that we have, right? Where we choose to spend our time is an indicator of what a person cares about. So if you ask your crush to hang out, and they choose to hang out with you and they say, yeah, let's hang out, then that means that they do like you in some capacity. They do want to get to know you better because they're willing to give up their time to be with you. Um, oh, me person. I'm sorry. You said you don't have Insta. I apologize for that. Okay. You might also, if you have Snapchat, you can message me on there um, or on Facebook if you use Facebook. Um, or if not, you can always message me by email, thejoshspeaks at gmail.com. Any way that you can reach out to me, I'll try my best to respond. Uh, Damien says, ah, where did it go? I was on a roll. Uh, Josh, when are you going to check your DMs, Insta DMs? I'm super behind on DMs. Um, Comic-Con is this weekend, New York Comic-Con. So I don't know if I'm going to check it this weekend. I'm going to try to get some DMs answered tonight and tomorrow. I'm going to see what I can do. 
All right, let's get a few more questions in here. The infamous three second rule. It's infamous, it's the three millennium rule. <laughs> um, can you give me 10 ideas where to go on a date? Lakeisha Hill, I actually made a video called 10 Amazing First Date Ideas for Teenagers. That is 10 ideas right there. Um, things like going to the movies, things like going for a walk in the park, things like um, going to grab something to eat. Go, go check out that video. I think it'll be super helpful for you. Okay, let's answer three more questions. Rapid fire, rapid fire, guys. And then heading over to Instagram. Uh, does Josh have a Discord? I do have a Discord. Uh, me, person, I'm going to put the link for the Discord down in the chat. In the, the description below so you can go check it out uh, or you can go to the joshspeaks.com slash discord and that'll take you over to the discord let's see uh demented dog says i have anxiety and i don't know what to do with meeting new people and have not and it not be not be awkward can't use three seconds rule okay so you have anxiety you don't want to do with meeting new people i think in those situations the best thing to do is to take small steps guys one of my really really solid solid beliefs is that everything is small steps so Instead of focusing so much on approaching people, starting conversations, focus on three key things, making eye contact, smiling, and saying hello. If you can master those three things, then you can worry about approaching people to start conversations. So whenever you see someone you wanna to talk to, try to really hold eye contact with them. Try to smile and just say, hey, how's it going? Get comfortable doing that time after time after time after time. And then once you've done it so many times, it's gonna become natural for you. And then the next step is, let me start a conversation with them. Okay, one more question here. Let's see. Um, Jordan Harris says, I know this girl and we're kind of friends, but not close. I like her a lot. How do I ask her out? Okay. So Jordan, because I didn't post a video yesterday because I just got caught up with stuff, I'm going to post a video on Sunday. And this is going to be all about how to ask out a girl best friend or a girlfriend of yours, a girl that, you, that you're friends with and you want to ask her out. That video on, on Saturday is going to be super helpful for you. But my, my just advice with that is going to be this. Um, if you're not really that close with the girl, I would focus on getting to know her better, hang out with her, talk to her, uh, ask her things, start a conversation on Snapchat or Instagram with her. Just really show an interest in who she is as a person. If she sees that you're interested in getting to know who she is, she's going to be more invested in sharing things with you. And it's that, it's that space in between where you're both interested in the other person. That's where the magic happens. Okay. My final thoughts, guys, before I wrap this up, um, the, 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 okay. <laughs> the name of this live stream is, let me slow down a bit. I'm going too fast. All right, we're at 44 likes guys. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up, let's get to 50 likes. The, the name of this live stream is how to spot, how to spot a fake friend uh, who is just using you, right? That's kind of what we came here to really talk about. And ultimately what I would say is this, it's that you want to surround yourself with people that are going to bring you up, right? Not people that are going to tear you down. No one deserves to have negative people in their lives. And the reason why people are negative is because they don't have the skill set. They don't have the knowledge. They don't have someone positive in their life to help them move out of that. So they are on their own journey. They are on their own battle. They are struggling in their own way. So that's their fight. What your fight is, is to create a world, to create a network of people, to create a circle that you feel that you can give advice to, you can help them grow and they can help you grow. Guys, I really want you to succeed in life. I want you to be prosperous. I want you to be happy, to be mindful, to be confident, to be compassionate. And I really think that, you know, what I love about these live streams is that I bring you know, we bring everyone together and yes, we joke and we share banana emojis and stuff, but ultimately I, I do, I feel like I get a lot from this. I, I learn a lot from you guys and I hope you guys learn a lot from me and from each other. We're all here to help each other grow and that's what this community is all about. So if you have negative people in your life, it's time to say goodbye to them, bring some positive people in and let's make a difference in this world. All right, guys, thank you so much for being a part of this live stream. Like I said, head on over to Instagram and join the Instagram after party. It's going to be lit. It's going to be fun, guys. All right, join me over on Instagram. I will see you guys over there. As always, love and peace. See you guys.